Hi everybody, Steve Tartar, another edition of Tartar Sauce, and with me today, Jake Heyman. Jake, uh, you've been, we've had you in, in the chair before. <laughs> in the chair, it sounds yeah. so uh, <laughs> Like a sinister. punishment, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, don't try getting out of that chair. Uh, <laughs> but no, Jake, you, you um, I think when we first met, you were with One Fire. You founded One Fire Correct. here in Peoria, uh, high tech and all that. Um, you got very involved in the community. Then tragedy hit. Yeah, uh, lost yeah. my wife. Lost your wife. Yeah. Left town. Left town. Texas. Texas. Came back. Correct. Happily, and re happily remarried. Happily and, remarried. Yeah, yeah. And now you've got Content Readiness Institute. Tell us about that. Sure. So it's uh, kind of an evolution, if you will. So as you know, I'm a serial serial entrepreneur. Serial entrepreneur. Serial I like entrepreneur. that. Yeah. I remember one of our talks, you were reading off my card and <laughs> ran out of things to call me. So um, this has really been kind of an evolution of what's happening in the technology space. So mm -hmm. uh, some of the work that we were doing at One Fire, uh, we were working in uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, um, some very uh, new, early adopting, you know, early adopter technology. Um, we're starting to see more and more of that uh, come on board with, you know, Pokemon Go. I, I think you guys ran an article in the paper about that, and um, One Fire was participating in that. Virtual reality has become mm -hmm. more popular with gaming and things like that. But this um, isn't just game. It isn't. So I think that's kind of where the evolution has happened. This has now moved into the enterprise space, right, mm -hmm. for businesses. And I think the clients that I had before and that I've had connections with are starting to use this technology you know, in the B2B space, whether it be for, you know, training people or helping technicians in the field or that type of thing. So, so, so just so people understand, if somebody wanted to get a better understanding of, say, how to do a job on, on a Caterpillar assembly line, they can give them a big book or talk to them, or they can put on whatever the the apparatus is correct and they can visualize it actually see it being done yes exactly right. exactly so it's really what my intent is to really help these companies figure out how to get to that point mm -hmm. so you know in some cases these companies may be five or ten years from getting there mm -hmm. um, some maybe sooner but there's things that need to be done in the meantime in order to get them ready for that so you know just like you said if they're in a, if they're using a paper manual today right it mm -hmm. may be 200 pages. Well, at some point, that has to be converted over to digital, so that it can be, you know, read either just even on a mobile phone or an iPad. Mm -hmm. um, let alone going into, you know, something mounted on your head that you can see through. So, my goal really with this is to kind of help them, you know, think through that process, you know, end to end. And you know, what what kind of response? You don't have to give us the details of sure, the, sure. the people involved, but what kind of feedback do you get when you knock on a door of some company? Obviously depending on the size. Sure. Um, are they fully aware? Is, are there, is it a learning thing? What, what, what are you finding? Uh, I think everybody's kind of at a different spot. So, in which is to be expected. Mm -hmm. um, different industries are at different spots. Different companies are at different spots. Some are just doing experiments. Um, they're, you know, trying out what could this mean for our company? How could this save some costs? Um, make, you know, training more effective? Reduce, you know, time to do a procedure? That type of thing. Um, some have done those pilot projects, the Calmer Proof of Concept projects, and are ready to scale. Um, some, like I said, are five to ten years out, but they know that, you know, it's somewhere they want to be in the future. So they're all kind of in, in different spots, um, but it all follows kind of a similar path, regardless of where you start. So. Now, so given you, you're traveling about uh, where... You know, where's your territory? Is it is it Central Illinois? Is it uh, wider, or what's what's your uh, what's your traveling time? Yeah, well, I mean, I could I could I haven't had to yet travel mm -hmm. out of here. Um, plug to the airport, right? It's easy to get out of here and right. get somewhere. But um, plug no, to the airport yes, there. Plug for the airport. <laughs> um, no, I haven't had to yet. But the clientele that I'm talking to are you know nationwide, and in some cases, you know, they have a global global presence. Mm -hmm. um, of course, technology makes it a lot easier to talk to these people today and not. Have have to necessarily go anywhere. Sure. Um, and then there's also some associations that I'm a part of that um, 
um, connect everybody globally. So there's an association, a lot of acronyms, the VRARA, which <laughs> is the Virtual Reality Augmented Reality Association. Um, they're a global institute that mm -hmm. essentially they do have different committees around you know, healthcare and manufacturing, aerospace, so on and so forth. Uh, and they are global in nature. So sure. through that, of course, you're meeting with clientele and, and having discussions with people that are located all over the place. Now, Jake, we, uh, talking with Jake Hammond of, of Content Readiness Institute, I'll say that because that's a relatively new uh, enterprise, so yep, yep. people are going to go, what's that? I haven't heard of that. Well, that's because this guy came up with it. Um, <laughs> but you, you, you're no stranger to the tech world here in Peoria. I mean, you were mm -hmm. part of the, the, the meetups and you know, getting Peoria as a uh, sort of an innovation place. Um, wh where are we at now? Well, because you see it from yeah. a couple of perspectives, I, coming and going. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, so I founded, uh, co-founded Startup Peoria back in 2012, I guess mm -hmm. it was. We were doing a lot of those meetups. The One Million Cups got started through that. The Nest co-working space got started through that. I can't believe um, that's been seven years. I know. It's 2012. You're not old. <laughs> <laughs> you're not old, dude. Yeah. yeah, you're not old. Um, so that program then moved underneath the EDC, and Randon, of course, mm -hmm. runs that today. So. Right. Uh, it's been interesting to kind of see, you know, being removed from it, mm -hmm. not being here and coming back and kind of seeing where things are at. So uh, we've still got a ways to go. I think a lot of progress has, has been made for sure. Uh, we're starting to get some, you know, more national attention. Uh, I spend quite a bit of time now in Chicago with some, and some events and stuff. And just, you know, with the people I try, talk to trying to change that narrative up there because they're still under the impression that, you know, cat left, things are tough, and that's not the case. So the, 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 once cat left Peoria, we were all destitute. Right, right, yeah. right. But nobody knows about, you know, natural fiber welding or enduvo or bump boxes. Jump trading. Jump tra yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of serving just as a, a cheerleader and educator, too, when I go, you know, talk to people. And I think specifically in this space with what I'm doing in this, you know, emerging tech space, we've got a lot of potential here. We actually held our first meetup um, last month specifically around these technologies and had about 25 people show up and I was really pleased. Um, but there's a lot of activity happening with virtual reality and augmented reality here in Peoria. Um, and there's no reason once again we couldn't become a, a hotbed for, for that type of activity. Is it? Now I know you, you just said you've been up and back to, to Chicago where mm -hmm. obviously there, there's a great uh, amount of uh, activity on, on many fronts um, is it and I assume it is it's just harder for a smaller town a smaller city to to convey that uh, hey we've got something going here too um, mm -hmm. what 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 do you use as a I mean, you know, how do you convince folks that are sitting up there on Michigan yeah. Avenue or wherever they are, right, right. going, well, yeah, that's nice, but, you know, we, we got it all here. Right, right. Well, I think there's, like I said, there's work to be done in that space. Mm -hmm. um, trying to figure out a couple things in the back burner right now of, like, how do we do that? How do we do better storytelling of the good things that we do have going on here and promote that, not just not just regionally and not just Chicago, but everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Um, just having a conversation this morning with, with Lee from Bump Boxes hmm. um, and just looking at the success that they've had, not a lot of people know about it, number mm -hmm. one. And number two, like, we're prime in a prime position to be kind of an e-commerce, and then Lee brought this up, we're in a prime position to be an e-commerce hub in the Midwest. I mean, if you, yeah, if you if you look at, I mean, why did Cat choose to put their global parts distribution center in in Morton? Mm -hmm. Right, there's a reason, mm -hmm. you know. And and his point was a good one that if you look at, you know, the the technology piece, we have a lot of experience in there in that space. But then also the logistics and the operations and the supply chain piece that comes with the experience from the Caterpillars, the G and Ds, and all those different things. Mm -hmm. We've got the makings of and transportation, of course, right mm -hmm. with rail and and car and all that kind of thing we've mm -hmm. got a lot of the makings to you know to make us like an e-commerce hub and make it attractive for other companies i think to your point though we just have to do a better job of educating you know not just our own region but outside the regions so. well, how do you how do you get across because i mean you know we we here in the, in the newspaper and, and other media tend to be somewhat cynical and uh you know resist the chamber of commerce type approaches with you know that rah rah you know ribbon cutting and all this right, other right. stuff because that's just in our nature to sort of say yeah well we'll we'll see you six months down the road and then right, see how right. you're doing 
But how do you get across the the, the, the actual fact of the matter? I mean, you would know this because you, you're you're right in the field. Um, that there is something going on here. When you to convince people that might think, oh, well, yeah, I remember Peoria Next too, and uh, what happened there? Right, you know, right. I don't, don't hear anything about that anymore. Right. Well, I think you know, in a lot of cases, and I've had to do this with my own business now too, and and previously with with one fires like the the companies themselves don't have the time necessarily to go mm-hmm. toot their own horn you right know? so they're too busy trying to stay yeah, in business exactly exactly mm-hmm. so how can you know how can myself or any of our organizations do a better job of like cheerleading for them mm-hmm. um, and be able to kind of get that be able to go out and tell tell those stories to others that type of thing so you know and we don't highlight our history too much you know in terms of the things that have come out of Peoria mm-hmm. um, there's some really interesting facts when you do a little bit of research and the stuff that's happening well, like the ag lab and the ag all lab. That stuff. yeah just just some of the things that people may not even may not even realize so um but then you know the newer companies that are here some of the spaces that they're in are multi-billion dollar industries you know hmm. ar vr specifically right there's report after report after report that this is going to be a you know multi-billion dollar you know industry over the next 10 to 15 years uh, there's so there's plenty of money and, and opportunity mm-hmm. for the taking. So how can we, you know, leverage some of those things and, and leverage our expertise as a region, and you know try to draw some of that stuff here. Is is this uh, something a small business can take advantage of? Th- or it depends on I guess what they do. Yeah, it depends on what they do. Um, you know, and what their I guess business goals are in terms of scale, mm-hmm. you know, and that's really that definition difference between small business and a, and a startup. You know, startups really are focused on, you know, scale, large, you know, quick growth, mm-hmm. you know, fast scale, that type of thing. Um, small businesses, you know, not I won't say complacent, but they're okay with you know just staying at a certain number and, and not really growing it really quickly. So. Um, yeah, I, there's a place for both. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the makings for you know a support system for both those things, and uh, there are a lot of good pieces that you know we can help some companies like actually scale up and be be started. How much how much of a selling point is it to when you when you want to promote say Peoria as a as a well, as a working place, a tech place, however you want to uh, finish that sentence? Mm-hmm. Uh, the the fact is that here you can be. And I, I, probably wrong choice of words here. Big fish in a small pond, yep, yep. but you don't have the the commuting problems. You know, it's it's more laid back here. Right. You could you can make calls as you've probably been doing to to decision makers personally. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's approachable it if is. that's the right word. Yeah. I mean, is that not a selling point? Oh, I think it abs- it absolutely is that. You know, you can you can make a difference right mm-hmm. here if you if you choose to do so. Um, you know, there's plenty of opportunity. There's opportunity to make a mark. You know, get involved in whatever it may be. So yeah, absolutely. I think part of it too is you know promoting to the audience that's looking for a place like Peoria too. I mm-hmm. think you know trying to promote. Peoria and our region to, to millennials, at least at this point right now, mm-hmm. is probably not the best, right? Because right. they're, you know, if you're straight out of college, you know, I, I think there are some. I got a little wanderlust to yeah, uh, exercise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think there are some great examples of people that have stayed here and, and been really successful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think we ignore them by any means, but to target the group that really, you know, today even calls Peoria home, right? It's the the folks that are looking to settle down, start a family, right? It's good school systems, all that type of thing. You know, let's target them, you know, maybe that are in other cities to try to say, you know, mm-hmm. you're done with the hustle and bustle of somewhere like Chicago, right? And right. you're ready to settle down, mm-hmm. you know, come on down here. It's, it's a good place to, to do those things. And you're so. within, a, you know, a short drive, I guess, depending on your, mm-hmm. your, uh, how you look at driving, uh, to go to Indianapolis, Chicago, St. Absolutely. Louis, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it works well. Yeah, and I'm finding too, just to add on to that, you know, a lot of these companies that I'm talking to have a presence in one of those cities. Mm-hmm. So you know, I I still believe the face to face meetings are the best, right? So right. anytime you can go, you know, drive two hours, like you said, to Indy or Chicago, St. Louis, and Des Moines, whatever it may be. We're within that within that time frame, so that makes it nice too that a lot of them have you know have chosen to kind of put some headquarters in those spaces. Um, what do you what do you suggest for somebody that that may be listening or watching this and says, oh, okay, uh, meeting up and 
uh, getting together with people that have, have got some ideas. What, what, what do they do? Where, where do they go? So right now, I mean, the the EDC through um, Startup GP, they put out and they have a calendar of events and that type of thing. There's also a lot of information on meetup.com. So meetup is a place, it's a, a national platform where you can find out events that are going on. I was searching on there and lo and behold found a, uh, there's a podcast alliance meetup that you should probably start <laughs> attending. That yeah. That happens uh, once a month out uh-huh. at uh, Industry Brewing at a seven o'clock, and it's essentially, you know, people from the Peoria area that do that publish podcasts and mm. they share best practices and just talk shop and that type of thing mm. uh, on a monthly basis. And I, it's like, oh, there's that group. There's you know WordPress meetup. There's uh, an interesting lady. Her name's Rebecca Sexton. She just moved here from Minneapolis, mm-hmm. um, not too long ago. She's been here a little while, but she's starting a healthcare uh, meetup. Oh, around. that should do well. Here. Yeah, around how yeah. do we how do we enable you know healthcare startups you know within the region with the right support and resources and of course yeah like you said with our hospital systems mm. there's no reason we can't spur off you know several companies in that space so uh, she's starting that here in the end of March um, I'm doing one around augmented reality virtual reality every month so there is activity going on um, it's just like you said the matter of people finding out where to go uh, meetups a good place the GPEDC website's a good place to go. You're and Facebook, good, of course. Of course. I, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, you're a good example of uh, the modern uh, tech pioneer, however you want to put it, because you, you your headquarters right now is The Nest. It right? is, yeah. Why don't you tell what people may not know yes. what The Nest is. So The Nest mm-hmm. is a co-working space that we started with, or that Startup Peoria began, oh gosh, it was seven years ago. Yeah. It used to be located above Sugar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's now moved next door into the Biggins Label building. Um, Arts Partners is there. Sherry Bustos has just Just there. next door to Sugar. Yeah, just yeah. to the left. Yeah. Um, so the back area there is a co-working space space essentially an open office type of environment but you rent a desk and you, you know you get a seat within there it's it's shared Wi-Fi share printers those types of things it's been you know the whole concept behind those is is to meet with other people you know find other resources and that's been really helpful the conversations that go on there are always good mm-hmm. um, you might bump into somebody that's you know struggling with something that you can help them or, or vice versa um, so yeah it's you know you pay a monthly monthly fee and get together and and talk with other entrepreneurs so then there's a mix of people that are there there's some that are remote workers mm-hmm. um, you know that are working for another company and and you know don't want to necessarily work out of their their home all the time right. need to be around people mm-hmm. um, and then there's those that are just you know like small business which is just a business of one um, and then there's others that are you know starting their hopefully scalable company and you know are, are working out of there on a regular basis how many people would you say are, are in and out of there um, I don't have to ask Randon what the <coughs> membership is, but on, I, a, on a given day, there's you know it could be up to ten kind of. S- you know, I'm thinking kind of <coughs> that's there's there's a story I don't think we've done. Yeah. Uh, you know. But well, anyway, we we we're thinking out loud here, yeah. folks. You know, <laughs> look, on you, the fly. That's we, the thing you know, live. You're on the, on the fly. Right, we're live, and uh, <laughs> look for it at a later point in the uh, online or wherever it can be. Yeah. Um, Jakey, you're you're um, you you're you're always uh, one thing. It's that hasn't changed. With with you is you you like to network in the community. Absolutely. You know a lot of folks here. Uh, they know you. Um, is is that something you come by? How did, how did you get into that? That's a good question. <clears throat> Um, I don't know. Because not everyone does that. That's true. Yeah. It's true. Um, I think I got some of that from my dad. My dad mm-hmm. was involved in civic government and stuff for a long time. Fire chief in Pekin back in the day. Mm. Worked for the county. Worked for Peoria County. Worked for Woodford County. Uh, so he's kind of always been, you know, public servant type of guy. Right. And a networking kind of guy. So I think through, you know, when Focus Forward was going on and we were doing all the economic development stuff, that's kind of when I really got into that and then of course mm-hmm. when you're building a business you kind of are forced into that um, so yeah I think through those things and serving on boards and all that kind of stuff built you know uh, relationships with all these different people across the community and it's funny I'll go talk to somebody and you know kind of fill them in they're like well you've already talked to them and you've <coughs> talked to them so <laughs> it's not but like yeah. you're already halfway there yeah, yeah. Um, well that that's true because I remember uh, having covered a lot of those uh, focus forward meetings which was basically revamping the economic development uh, machine mm-hmm. for this area and not just Peoria but the greater Peoria area, 
the one catchphrase, and, and if it's the right word to use, was collaboration. Mm -hmm. Because you'd hear it, everyone would always say, well, you know, we've got to have East Peoria and Peoria work together. We've got to have Morton and Pekin and mm -hmm. so forth work together. Is that something, you, there's, there's always going to be territorial, you know, turf, right. turf battles. How do you see that in this area? Is it, is it a big battle, or do you, do you see progress? Um, I see progress. I try to not think about that when I'm having discussions with people and trying Rather to make sure anticipate I, it. Yeah, because it is, I mean, it's a regional effort, mm -hmm. right? If, if one city is successful, then it benefits everybody. You know, I think... Uh, regionally, we're much stronger, and I think that all came through that you know focus forward effort of kind mm -hmm. of bringing everybody you know into the same room. I think there was understanding too in those discussions as well that you know we used to, it used to be Central Illinois. I try to find myself saying always saying Greater Peoria because people can identify with that, and it's mm -hmm. more uh, you know. Uh, semantics thing than anything. Well, right? plus it's Springfield thinks they're Central Illinois, right? Exactly. And, you know, and you can yeah. get people confused. You know, right. Not right. That there's anything wrong with Springfield, folks. No, no, but, no. Uh, no. So I think you know you 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 play to what people know mm -hmm. in terms of geography and that type of thing, and because yeah, you you tell them you're from Central Illinois, and they're like, which which one? Which yeah. one is that? So yeah, where exactly are uh, we talking yeah, about? Yeah. yeah. So I think just as as long as and, and like I said, this kind of my approach is just not thinking about that when you're out working on stuff and you know you know if you're posting something about you know Peoria well you include in the Heights or you include in East Peoria that type of thing and just kind of sharing the love with everybody mm -hmm. um, across the region and I don't think it ruffles any feathers and I think as long as that approach and that mentality is there and you're up front with it then you know, people don't get offended. Well, yeah and, and you know the other thing is you know there's going to be much more success for the whole area if people band together rather than each one saying, no, no, this is mine, yeah, yeah. And, and you'll do it my way. Yeah. Um, we, we won't get into, I know you're working on some other things that aren't done yet. You're, you're, you're hard at it. <laughs> um, but but the, I think it's intriguing. You shared some of that with me when we did an interview last week, and, and I'm fascinated with it, and, and we'll, we'll you know look forward to, to your um, when, when we can go public on it. But that's something that that occupies you uh, all the time, isn't it? I mean, you've got always got a future thing going along with the present. Yep, yep. So I think I mean that's the I don't know community builder part of me. So I think when we met before, you were going through the different titles on my business card. It's now like business builder, disruptive innovator, and community builder. So through. The Startup Pure efforts and when One Fire was getting founded, I was part of an organization called Startup America, mm -hmm. um, which was essentially a collection of community builders across the U.S. that get together and share best practices and you know, how do you grow your ecosystem around innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, and it kind of helped put Peoria a little bit on that national stage in terms of those conversations, you know, that, hey, there's, you know, kind of raising our hand, hey, there's stuff going on, there's stuff going on here in Peoria. So um, I think just as being from the area, I think I, I grew up in Pekin, right? Mm -hmm. And um, there's actually a couple stories which are really interesting, I don't have time to get into today, about some really successful people that I went to high school with right. um, that mm -hmm. are now, you know, in one's out in Utah and one's in Boston doing really well for themselves. Um, but it's just that, that pride of, you know, being from the area, and I've committed myself to, to stay here now and, and build this up and give it another shot, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, so it just comes with the territory. It, it's kind of fun, even within some of this content readiness stuff, where I'm in, you know, committees or you know, posting things, and I'm able to say, oh, hey, this company from Peoria is doing this really cool thing. Mm -hmm. Check them out. So right. yeah, very always good. an opportunity to be a cheerleader. Well, you know? very good. Well, hey, uh, we need cheerleaders, uh, and yep. you know, and, and of, of all types and all all uh, areas and all subjects. Uh, we're talking with Jake Hammond at uh, the Content Readiness Institute, and and Jake will undoubtedly have more to say on all kinds of things, <laughs> uh, whether it's just about technology in Peoria, innovation in Peoria. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I listen to you, I'm always thinking, you know, that would be uh, a good, oh, I don't know, half hour is the right word, but television show periodically Absolutely. to show the spotlight to give people, like people like myself, well, I stumble around and find things when, because I have to do a story about it, so I, I wind up learning about 3D printing or whatever right, it is. Right. The average person, 
it probably is way ahead of me, but the average person probably needs to know what's going on in the community. Sometimes yep. we tell them, sometimes we don't. Right, right. I think that's, I mean, that's one of our, the biggest things that we need to, I think, as a community, we can focus on that's going to help make it better, right? Mm -hmm. It's just changing that narrative, right, around the negative, you know, the things that, that happen. And, and <laughs> interesting, somebody was talking to me about this yesterday. Even from a technology perspective, it's hard to shift that direction because of, I mean, if you think of like algorithms <coughs> and stuff within search engines and how they oh. generate results and things like that, right? If you start getting in this negative trend, right, of negative stories or, you know, not so favorable news, to try to reverse that is, is challenging from even a technology standpoint. So I think we have to, you know, as citizens to just start to change that narrative around, like you're saying, the, the positive things that are going on here, promoting those internally, you know, amongst our ourselves amongst the community and then also getting you know outsiders to look at us in a more favorable light because there is you know these really good things that are going on here but you know it's up then to the companies and others to promote those positive stories find out about them make them accessible so that stories you know can be written and we can kind of tell that to, to everybody so sometimes I think that the way the news works or, or the human mind works is there's only room for one thing at a time mm -hmm. and so if you if you're sitting <laughs> at least me uh, <laughs> I'm sure that's not true everyone's going no what's he talking about but I'm th what I'm talking about is you sit down in an airplane and somebody beside you've never met before and you probably won't see again mm -hmm. and oh, where are you from and you say Peoria right <clears throat> and they say oh Peoria that's the place where Caterpillar used to be. Right. You know, and it's like, no, well, yes, you're right, but it's also, right. you know, it used to be Hiram Walker, used to be this, used to be yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a thousand things, but mm -hmm. getting them to change that one thing, right. which is, as you said, is probably the top of the line on the... Right. Yeah. Well, and I think chain. to your it's it's <coughs> how, how do you react to that when somebody says that? Right. Right. And being able to have the stories to tell to say not just the historic ones which are important, but being able to say, well, yeah, that's true. But did you know that right. we're doing X Y Z? You know, and those things that those X Y Zs are pretty impressive. So, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, and you could turn that too by saying, oh yeah, cat is. Cat's a fascinating place. They're doing all kinds of things. You know, they have the Cat Visitor Center in Peoria. Right. You know, right. it's funny how they put that there, even though they, they you know, the headquarters is somewhere else. Right. So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways to play it, and we won't get into propaganda right now. Right, right. That's for another day. <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> well, look, Jake, we, we got to roll out of here. All right. I expect to, to see you again soon. Yes. Uh, hopefully when you're in ready, the next to, months, ready yeah. to give us some more, uh, some more uh, good stuff <laughs> about technology in Peoria. And right now, I want to thank Mac, Matt Dayhoff, who uh, does his bit for technology and gets this out to you people uh, on on the uh, the various wires <laughs> that you may be watching. And anyway, this is Steve Tartar, Jake Hammond. Thank you so much, Content Readiness Institute, and Steve Tartar from Tartar Sauce Singh. See you next time. <laughs>